Today in Grace Performance Repair, we're going to cover a little bit of something that I don't want to talk about, but I'm going to because I like to be honest and upfront with you guys, and that is mistakes made in the shop and what causes them as far as, in this case, engine stands. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I got kind of a mess going on in here, and that's because I didn't clean anything up other than trying to repair what the damages were that were caused. Um, so bear with me here. I'm going to bring you guys over here and show you the damage to my end of the shop, which is bare minimal concern compared to the damages that were caused. And then I'll give you a little explanation as, as to what happened. All right. There is some serious gouging going on in my floor right here. There's a huge mark and a bunch of grit and debris that has flown off because of it. Here's this guy. Now, this little chunk in the concrete here that is just laying powder everywhere, and my epoxy that is just peeling away all in this whole area, was heavily stressed by the weight of an engine block. Yes, you heard that right. A friggin' engine. Actually, not an engine block. A long block. It had the cylinder heads and everything on it, and it came down on this. And I want to bring awareness to those of you in the shop as to why this happened and why or what you can do to make sure it doesn't happen. First of all, make sure you invest in a proper engine stand. None of this cheap garbage. This thing, cheap garbage. This orange one right here, cheap garbage. That red one or peach? I don't know what color that thing is. The one over there, not so cheap, but still not expensive, acceptable stuff, I guess. And then I have another one over there I'll show you guys in a minute, because that is what you should be looking for in an engine stand. None of the ones here are good to look for if you're going to buy a brand new engine stand. Avoid specifically the three-legged engine stand. I never really gave it any consideration until this scenario happened, but that three-legged engine stand is a horrible, horrible design. And the reason why is pretty simple, really. If you even have the smallest little pebble on the floor, everybody knows, for instance, a jack, when you're rolling it across the floor, it hits a zip tie, the roller stops rolling, it can't even go over a stinking zip tie, right? Well, this is not much different. It can't go over much. On a hard floor like this with a hard wheel, usually these wheels are steel. These ones are rubber, so they're a little bit better. Like this one here, it's got little steel rollers on the wheels. The steel wheels can't go over anything. So the steel wheels, the advantage there is at least the wheel will slide, kind of, if it's a slippery enough surface on the floor. And you're not hitting something soft. If you're hitting something hard, it will hopefully slide a little bit before it gives. The rubber wheel... The item that it hit, I don't even know what it was. Perhaps it was a bolt. I don't know. I was so distracted and everything happening. I didn't pay attention. Maybe I kicked it. I haven't seen the item. It could have been a bolt. I don't know. I don't have much on the floor, or I didn't have much on the floor other than what you see, which is basically all the engine parts, and all the parts are in the engine. I have nothing missing. So I don't know what I hit. Maybe a pebble was stuck on my shoe, came off to the floor. I have no idea. Whatever it was, what happened, and I'm going to roll this slow because I'm going to be cautious, these wheels that were put on here are put on here by somebody else. Now, it probably had the steel casters on there before. This one now has all four swivels. Now, with four swivels, this is probably the main reason this thing had an issue. I don't think it would be as bad with the two swivels, but this thing does have four swivels on it, so maybe that's the main cause of the issue. But what happened with this thing is I was rolling it like this, right? And a wheel hit something. And the weight transfer of the sudden stop caused this thing to start tipping. I wasn't paying very good attention. I was just rolling away and looking at where I was going. All of a sudden, I felt the engine got lighter as I was rolling it. Because I, I felt like a little bit of a thump. The engine got lighter. I looked down and it's toppling over and I tried to catch it. Got a mark on my arm and it hit the floor. So, hit the floor caused damage to the engine, of course. So now here I am. I already fought with that, patching it up. It hit right on the corner here. It damaged the threads here, smashed them in. It luckily didn't crack the head itself. It just kind of smashed the aluminum. And then right here on the block, it smashed this part. It did crack over here, 
but the crack did not go in very far and it's not going to affect the block itself. All I had to do is clean it up, make sure the threads are you know, cleaned up on the end because the end was just destroyed. And then I left this flat surface here so that when the AC compressor bracket gets bolted on, it's not going to have any issues. It should still be perfectly fine to use. I am going to have to let the customer know this is his actual engine stand. So it's super unfortunate. Not a whole lot I can do. I'll give him a, a deal somehow on the ticket. I don't know. Him and I will work it out. But something I could not have anticipated without experiencing it for myself. If you've had this kind of circumstance, be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know that, you know, I'm not the only one having this kind of hell to pay when I roll something across the floor. Um, I have had that issue with my cherry picker as well once where I was rolling it because that's got swivel casters on all of it. And that's actually the way it came. That one gave me a little bit of difficulty once when I was going sideways. I almost lost the motor tipping over to the side as I was rolling it. And I learned not to roll that one sideways because of the same scenario. I've never had an issue with one of these, but I've never had one that could roll sideways. So I never really considered it, I guess. Stupid. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, there I go rolling it sideways again. I'm going to go nice and slow if I roll it sideways. So, three casters, no good. But, or three legs, I should say, no good. But, if you have multiple casters, where you have four casters, so you have four supports, it's not going to tip over. Now, this one, it does have multiple casters, where it's got a cross brace here. So, it's going to be a lot less tipsy. There's a little more stability going on. I'm totally okay with this one. I don't feel like that one's gonna give me any trouble. So, that one's cool, just doesn't have a huge support load capability. Uh, this guy here, I currently have much too heavy of an engine on it for the size of this unit. This is just like this one, only it's got, you can see straight wheels here, but it's got an axle welded on it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this one either. This is one of those I acquired for next to nothing, and the only reason I accepted it was for a backup engine stand. So this one is technically mine, and I'm probably going to try and avoid using it if I can help it from now on after having the issue I did with this one. Because I can imagine if I tried to rotate this one like that and I hit something, it could easily tip over. So I'm going to try and avoid that as well. What a guy should look for in an engine stand is something like this one here. This particular engine stand, you can see it's got a nice brace just like the rest of them here. It's got this deal here. It comes out on this. Now, I picked this up at Sears back when they, you know, sold Craftsman tools. Now that they don't, if they even exist anymore, they're, they're far and few in between. But this guy here, this, this slides out. You can actually store it up against the wall, which is kind of nice. But you can see the leg design comes out here. So it's got, it's still three, technically, I guess. You know, it's, it's kind of like the other one, but the, the four-wheeled one. But instead of going down the center, it comes out this way. This one's actually really nice because it gives you clearance room to put like oil pans and stuff under it. So because this one's like a C-shape channel under it, I know you can't see it very well as it sits here, but I'm not going to move all this stuff. Um, but because it's a C-shape channel like it is, you can put all kinds of things on here. Like I have this guy here, this giant plastic tray. And sometimes I'll take that and spread it across the whole end of this thing. That way when I'm rotating it for the first time and all the antifreeze and oils and whatnot are spilling out, they just land on the tray. Plus, I haven't had any concern whatsoever about this thing tipping, and it supports a lot more weight. Whenever I put a large or heavy engine on this thing, I have zero concern whatsoever of anything ever happening. I've always been a little bit skeptical of those three-legged ones, but I never really gave it much thought when I was moving them around. I just thought, you know, this feels kind of wimpy, and I kept going. I didn't think twice. I guarantee you I'm going to think twice now. I had to putz with that motor quite a while to just patch up the little bit of damage that it did cause because that thing hit really hard. So super unfortunate. And I wanted to make sure I brought these mis this mistake of mine to your attention so you don't make the same mistake in your shop. Get one of these. Well worth the extra money. No, that doesn't hurt. It's just, I'm, I'm barely hitting it. But well worth the extra money. Get yourself a nice engine stand. And if you can afford it, uh, what's really nice are those ones with the cranks that you can crank it and it turns the motor because they have like a worm gear in there. So the motor won't just automatically flip over on you. Those are really nice. Someday I'm going to get one of those, but I need a bigger shot before I start buying things like that. So hopefully bringing this to you.
to your attention is helpful to you and uh, you like what I've done here to just give you guys an idea of some of the struggles that happen here in the shop and things to try and avoid if you're doing this on your own or if you have a shop of your own or work for somebody what to tell them to avoid so that you or they don't end up in the same predicament. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.